All right, so my initial introduction to this video, I must have been very under-caffeinated because watching it back to edit it, man, did I sound bored. But I had mentioned in a previous video that since I kind of have a string of Halloween slash horror related videos, or vlogs specifically, starting I think in May, and then I had one for June with Spooky Empire, and I know things are gonna kick off again next month in August, so I want to do a June horror vlog just to keep this uh, Halloween season slow burn going until I hit my standard Halloween season vlogs in probably late August, early September. So this video starts out with me going to get a tattoo from my friend Rob Slasher. Rob's going to come up a lot in this video because I've been hanging out with him like way too freaking much lately. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, he's the tattoo artist that's done a lot of the stuff on my arm. I work with him with Stabbing Cabin Studios, making props and stuff. So yeah, that's definitely a reoccurring theme in this vlog. It's funny because I was trying to think of other tattoo vlogs I've seen people do and how to like shoot it to be more appealing like some of those that I've seen. And I realized most of those seem to be people in Europe who are like showing these cool like old cities. Yeah, they have to take like 18 forms of public transportation to get wherever they're going. And uh, I'm just driving down the same highway I've been on like three days in a row this week. So... Yeah, probably not going to be the most visually appealing, but uh, I'll try to make something work out of it. So, uh, the tattoo is done. I'm guessing this is going to just be a tattoo vlog because I think I have about maybe two minutes of footage if I stretch this out as far as possible. But, uh... Yeah, I can't show you a super clear view of it at the moment because it is wrapped up. But it is Stripe from Gremlins. So it's got the uh, second skin Saniderm over top of it. So uh, it's reflecting all the fucking light. But I am thrilled with how this thing came out. It looks so freaking cool. And really it was like the last really big gap left on my arm to fill, which is really exciting. You know, pretty much everything else from up here on my upper arm all the way down to my wrist is done at this point. Obviously there's space, we're gonna kind of fill in some color, and maybe a little bit more filler of anything small, but really most of the major area is covered. So that's kind of a big accomplishment on this. So this was done as with most of the tattoos on this arm by Rob Slasher. It's currently at the Nines tattoo shop in Daytona, which is the first time I've gotten tattooed by him there. Really cool little shop. I think it's just a private by appointment only shop. So it was just, you know, pretty laid back and chill and whatever. And it was kind of funny because, I mean, I've been basically working with Rob on a weekly basis, working on props and stuff for Stabbing Cabin Studios. So I was down there yesterday working on masks and then I came back down today for tattoo stuff. It's kind of funny. It's like, mode A on one day, mode B on the other. So I definitely gotta admit the uh, inner arm going into the armpit, not my favorite place to get tattooed, turns out. Uh, that, that hurt a lot, especially the very top of his uh, his stripe, of you know, stripes mohawk. Nah, not fun. Did not, did not care for that one. That was, that was a bit painful. So, uh, you know, glad I only have one more arm that I could do that too. <laughs> But the fun part about tattoos is that in like not even 24 hours, I'll probably forget all about that part and just be wanting whatever's next. And as a bit of a side story to this, when I went down there the other day, we went out to go get some stuff and uh, Rob asked to stop by this person's place to buy some VHS tapes. And uh, I remembered they had something that I wanted, but I didn't have cash on me. So I didn't, you know, I didn't ask about it because I didn't have any cash to pay for it with. And then uh, we ended up going by today and I was like, man, there was something they had that like I wanted and I can't remember for the life of me what it was, but like I definitely would have bought it. So uh, he wanted to go pick up something that he'd forgotten to buy the other day. And uh, I asked to see the box of VHS again and uh, I found right away what it was that I saw and it was Duel which is Spielberg's, I think, first real movie, if not his first movie straight up. But yeah, I, I don't know, I thought this was kind of cool to pick up. Really cool movie if you haven't seen it, and, and I just think it's neat that it's Spielberg's very first film, or first, like, major film, or whatever you want to call it. And you can kind of just see in it, you know, the promise that he has going forward and all that stuff. So, yeah, I was glad to pick this up to add to my relatively humble VHS collection. 
But, you know, I have been picking up a few different things just when I find things out in the wild that seem cool. And I have a lot of old VHS tapes from my childhood that I kind of threw up here as well. So I stopped by a local used bookstore. Uh, I forgot to film in there. I should have. They had a lot of Goosebumps, but the only one that I needed was this Monster Blood. I have Monster Blood, but I don't have one with the numbered spine, so this was my upgrade. Because I do want them all with the numbered spine. And then, um, I didn't have a lot of VHS tapes. But they had this one. I'm not familiar with the movie. I saw what you did and I know who you are. But William Castle's name's on it. So I figured it was cheap enough. I'll give it a shot and see what it is. And if, worst case scenario, if it sucks, I'll just sell it. <laughs> but, yeah, that was a, my little score from the bookstore. So I figured I'd just give a quick update on this as it's a uh, day in took the saniderm off of it and uh yeah you can actually see it and see how cool it looks which is nice because you couldn't with that other crap on there so in this clip i am pouring the second half of the molds for two new prop weapons that i want to offer through stabbing cabin studios for spookala i had created a sledgehammer that's kind of based off texas chainsaw massacre remake but could be used for anything else where it's a sledgehammer and then i also had an axe that is cast off a similar model to the one used in the original evil dead movies but you could use it for a lot of other things for a single headed axe for these i decided to make a fireman's axe and a double headed axe those being the next two like major designs i thought were really needed to kind of round out the offerings that i had i do have some other stuff in the works as well but these were the molds that i filmed myself finishing out and here are the molds filled with the foam. And then here I am cracking open the molds. Spoiler alert, I actually messed up the measurements on this one so they are underfilled. That's a bummer. But if we cut back to me in my office, I have some examples. Now these are not finished. They uh, still need some trimming and they haven't been painted. But here is the fireman's axe. These are soft foam, so they are uh, con safe. I mean, the handle is wood, but the blade itself is con safe and everything, which is great, including this back end. Uh, the pick back here is nice and squishy. And then here is the double headed axe. Same idea, uh, not quite finished yet, but it is a nice squishy material. You know, not gonna hurt anybody with it. You're definitely gonna hurt somebody more with the handle than anything else. But yeah, these are my two new offerings. I will have these painted up in one of several designs. I have kind of a spreadsheet going on of different paint jobs I want to include with these. And then, of course, I could always do custom versions as well. Well, I was going out to go see Nope, and I got down to where the theater was a little bit early and started just driving around killing some time. I figured I'd go see where Spirit was last year, and lo and behold... Not in the tiny ass little store they were in last year, but a much larger store they were in a couple years ago, I think. This is the first Spirit Halloween sighting I've had in person of the season. So, I mean, this is, uh, I guess getting towards the end of July. So, I'm sure it'll probably be at least another month before this thing's open. But very cool to actually spot one in the wild this early. I stopped in the comic shop here. Um, they're definitely picking up more horror stuff coming into the season, but uh, they also had a large amount of kaiju stuff. So I picked up the uh, the Mezco sets of Destroy All Monsters. So set one here. It's got uh, Godzilla, Rodan, Mothra, and Geras. And then set two that has Gorosaurus, Ghidra, Manda, and Baragon. Not sure if they're going to do a set three, because I know we're still missing a couple monsters, right? It's been a minute since I watched uh, Destroy All Monsters, but yeah, I think we're at least missing two more monsters, so uh, maybe we'll get another set. I don't know. But also, while I'm out here, I saw the next two Spirit Halloweens in person. Uh, last night, like I said, I found the one that was by the movie theater I went to, and then in this shopping center, there's another one, and then down the street, there's another one, so... They're definitely uh, getting ready to at least start setting up, which is cool. 
So since I mentioned going to go see Nope the other night, I just wanted to do a quick review of it. Um, no spoilers or anything here. I will say it's probably my least favorite of Peel's three movies. And I can't say I particularly loved it, though I do seem to be in the minority there. I will say with Us, it took me a while to actually kind of come back around on it. So I don't know if that's going to happen with this movie as well. I did like some of the ideas in it. The problem is some of the ideas that were more backstory items I found more interesting than the main plot. And maybe it's just that I don't like typical Close Encounters kind of movies with aliens. Like, if I have aliens, I want alien monsters. I want aliens. I want King Ghidorah. I want that kind of shit. So when it's more like, oh, there's a UFO and we're trying to get footage of it, it it's not as intriguing to me. There's a story that's interjected multiple times with a TV show that I found completely terrifying. Mostly because it borrowed from real life elements that... It's one of those stories that just creeps me the hell out every time I hear about it. So yeah, I think I kind of would have preferred a movie just on that subject. But yeah, that's just a quickie review, like I said. I feel like I may try revisiting it when it goes on streaming, or at least watching some other videos of people reviewing it to see if maybe I was missing something out of it that made me dislike it, because it does seem that I'm in the minority there. Not that I can't have my own opinion, but uh, you know, just you know, when I feel like everybody's going a different way on a movie, I kind of like to understand why, especially if they enjoyed it and I didn't. So last night I went out to Orlando, or technically Samford, which is kind of east of Orlando in that vague area. Well, first off, I stopped at Acme Superstore, which is a comics and collectibles store out kind of in that direction. I used to go there quite a bit when I lived down there, and I usually try to stop there when I'm in town. I will say, like, now that I have a comic shop up here in Jacksonville that has a lot of cool collectibles and stuff, and then I think also Acme has not gotten as much older stuff in as they used to. They used to, like, buy a lot of stuff from people and have it out there, and they did have some, like, older figures, but between... A lack of variety and, like, their prices being stupid. I This is, like, one of many times I've been there in, like, the last couple of years where I just have not wanted to buy anything. <laughs> or I've not been able to justify buying anything from them, which kind of sucks. But the main reason I was down there is my friend Rob, his band was playing out there. So I wanted to go down there and support them. So the band is Alone in the Catacombs. They actually just put out their first music video for their song Immolated Aura. And I helped out doing some of the effects and some other various things on that video shoot. The video is up on YouTube, I'll link it below. It was definitely a fun experience shooting that thing. And it was good to see them play live. Uh, I think this is only their second show that they played, and they've added a member since they played last, which is almost a year ago, I think, at this point. So, yeah, it was, it was good to see them uh, getting them back on stage again. <laughs> I guess since it kind of fits in with some of the other themes of what I was uh, showing earlier in this video, I did get a package in the mail. I found this lot on eBay and I uh, decided to jump on it. First up we've got the original King Kong on VHS, which is pretty cool. Interesting cover to it. I don't know if this is the cover I would want out of all of them, but uh, yeah, and this was relatively inexpensive, so you can kind of see there is a little bit of a... Uh, wear and tear on the box. That's not a terrible thing to me. Sometimes I think half the fun of this is that they are a little worn out and a little like beat up looking and have that vintage aesthetic to them. Next up, keeping on that theme, is the 70s Kong. I mean, this is like the classic artwork for that, the De Laurentiis version. And uh, yeah. This one, like I don't love the movie as much as I love the original. Or honestly, there's a lot of other Kong movies I like above this one. But because it was the Universal ride back in the day, I have a lot of nostalgia for this movie. I didn't even see the movie until much later, but because the confrontation ride at Universal Studios was based on this, like, when I saw the movie, I felt like I'd already seen the movie, if that makes any sense. And I saw recently, go on a complete sidetrack, I never really pay much attention to the theming in the Mummy store at Universal. And I don't know if it's a new thing they added or it's something that's been there. But I saw somebody posting a video the other day where they're showing off like um, different like news article themings inside the place. And everything is basically like Carl Denham from King Kong. 
is putting on the mummy exhibition, which I thought was interesting. Like, I don't know, like I said, I don't know if that's been there or not, but I like that it's kind of a tribute of like what used to be in that building and what's in that building now. And then last out of this set, the one I was most excited for, honestly, King Kong versus Godzilla. Very much wanted this copy or this uh, version of the cover because this is what I remember being at the video store when I was a kid. This is the version I rented years and years ago. So really excited to get this one added. I don't, I don't feel the need to collect like everything VHS. I have a big enough movie collection on Blu-ray and DVD. I don't really need to go crazy and get like a lot of the same like slasher movies and things on VHS. But I think like kaiju movies and universal horror is kind of a nice place to focus a collection on. So I think that's what I'm gonna really look into. If I find cool stuff, I'll pick it up. I mean, I already have done that with some other movies like Duel and stuff, but uh, yeah, I think this is what I'm really going to be looking mostly for. So that about wraps up this vlog. Not tons of stuff, but a few things I thought would be fun to share. In August, there is the Phantasm Con back down in Orlando, and I highly anticipate we're going to start seeing some Spirit Halloweens open and some other Halloween stuff kind of trickle out. I know some stores like Home Goods and stuff already have Halloween stuff, but not normally the stuff that I'm after. But I know it's only going to start building from this point, so expect to see a lot more in August. But that'll be it for July, so I'll see you guys next time. Later.